Hey you guys, it's Alex here and today I've got another After Effects tutorial for you and today I'm going to be going over lights in After Effects and how they can be used to create some really nice effects and because I've all, I've never actually, I've watched a lot of tutorials and I've never seen anyone actually go over lights in After Effects and they never seem to be used that much but they're actually quite interesting, you can create some quite cool effects so as you can see I made an intro a while back and I, this was only in After Effects, and I used lights to create these uh, sort of gradients and blending the colours in on the text, on the text as you'll see in a second when I show you a quick preview. And that's what I'm just going to be go over today, and also some maybe extra features with some optical flares, and also maybe making some 3D text as well. So if we just take a quick look at my intro that I made. So as you can see, we've got this uh, yellow sort of glow, uh, sorry, orange glow, and then we've got a blue glow, and you can see how it affects the text, and it slowly blend, um, excuse me, and slowly blends together. So that's what I'm going to be going over today. So if we go into After Effects, and now I have got my new computer finally, a long-awaited thing, and I've got my new monitor as well, 24 inch, and it's finally nice to have After Effects CS6 as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a new composition. I'm just going to make it 1280 by 720. It doesn't matter what length really. And I'm going to make a new text layer. I'm going to maybe call this tutorial. Sorry for the loud keyboard. And we can just uh, press S on our keyboard. Scale it up a bit. Something like that. Center it up. And then what we can go ahead and do, we can go ahead and create a new light. Um, I recommend you put it on point and we can call this orange light and we can make the intensity 100 and just select maybe an orange color and we can click OK. So now this is going to create a new light. Now you'll see that nothing happens but what we'll do is we're going to uh, set up our scene first before we uh, start changing anything. So we're now going to press Control D and duplicate the light a second time and we can call this one blue light click enter and then we can go and then we can click AA on our keyboards and then we can change the color maybe to a nice light blue like that so now we have these set up now what we can do is we can go layer new and make a new null object we can call this orange control now this is just going to make it easier for us to control our lights. So we can click P on the orange light and then P on the orange control. Let's move this below. And then we can then just click Alt and then click on the stopwatch of the position of the orange light. And then grab this little pigwit tool and pigwit it, pigwit it to the orange control like that. And then click out. And now that's now taking the position of our orange control. And we can also just make that 3D. And I'm just going to do that again quickly. Sorry about this. So make sure you make the null 3D first because then we can get some 3D data as well. Then we can now make another new null object for the blue. And we can rename this blue control. Again, I apologize for the keyboard. I need to get a new keyboard. It's just a standard Dell keyboard at the moment. And we're going to click position or P on our keyboard to get up both of the positions and we're going to click alt click on the blue light position pig whip it to our position of our blue control and click out so now we have set up our scene and now what I'm going to do now what we can do is to make our, the light actually affects our text affect our le uh, text layer we can then make this a 3d object by clicking this 3d cube here Oh, now I've actually got Ray Trace 3D on at the minute, so it's going to take a bit longer to render. But you, we can do some nice things in CS6. So if you don't have CS6 after this, I will have to. You won't be able to do it, but I definitely recommend you get CS6 because there are some really nice features in this. Um, actually, what I probably could do is I could turn it off. But we'll just leave it for now. It's best for me just to leave it. Yeah, ray, the problem with Ray Trace 3D is it takes a long time to render, so I'm just going to put it back to the classic 3D for now. So then we're not going to have a long render time. Now you can see that our um, tutorial has gone black, 
and we need to make sure that our lights are on and but oh, I, I think I know the reason and that is we if we go to our top view by going here the lights actually need to be at the moment they're right then next to it the text there we just need to push these forward a bit so oh now we need to go on the controls so so we just scoop these forward a bit that way like that now if we go to our active camera you can see we start to get this but now what we can do is say I'm gonna put move the I'm gonna move the blue over to this side oh, oh wait. so I can move it over maybe here put that on the edge there I can get the orange and move it the other way no oh, doesn't want to move being a bit of a pain so we can just scoop this over and again play around with it and then we could maybe click AA on both of the lights uh, like this and then we could put up the intensity maybe 200 try that yeah maybe 200 just so we get a bit more vivid colors and then a really nice technique that I used in my intro was that we could then there's this and if we make a new, now if you have optical flares I recommend you do this because it will really emphasize the lights so what we can do is we can make a new solid we can call this optical flares click OK and we can go to our effects and presets type in optical flares and drag that onto our optical flares layer take a bit to load but there we go we can put this or we can go F4 on our keyboard and make the transfer mode add so we have no black background and now what we can do is well actually we'll go select a uh, flare first so I don't know I'll just use a preset or something I haven't really looked through them so maybe the gold um, mm -hmm. we could get the golden sun uh, take off some of these irises so we don't need them all maybe we could then go um, over to the side um, well, I'll just leave it there for now you can play around with it and just click OK so now we have our optical flare here but what we can do is we can go to the uh, positioning mode and we can train changes to track light so what this is going to do is going to track our lights and it's going to take the colors and the data of our lights and track it so now we have these so it's followed our lights and now you, you'll be able to see is if I go say move my blue control you can see that the optical flare flow follows the light so you could do quite a lot with this and what we just do is we will put the scale down to maybe 50 like that and then we can maybe put some flicker on drop down here maybe put it 25 for the speed actually no we'll put it at speed of 10 and then maybe the amount of 25 so that's just gonna give it some animation you can see how it moves and we could also put the intensity well we could uh, I think we could scale up our tutorial layer actually it's looking a bit small and center it up so now you can see it sort of blends really nicely into with each other and then if you do have CS6 what we could then do is we can go click on our classic 3D thing here and we can change this to ray trace 3D and just make sure it's maybe on one for now just the ray trace quality obviously when you come to render you want to maybe put it up a bit but for now just while you're working with it, it you want to keep it down at a draft level because otherwise it will take a uh, long time to render and what this will do is it's going to give us some geometry options and we can put the extrusion def uh, uh, depth up to maybe 50, 50. so it's going to make this 3D and we could put a bevel on it maybe an angular and like that and then now what we can do is we can create a new camera and we can go to the orbit tool by this, this go to this little camera hold click and click on the orbit tool or just press C and cycle through them and now what we can do is we can rotate around and as you can see our optical flares are in 3D space and see and they are and they are affecting the text as we move around so you could create some really nice things you could animate the camera maybe coming in so we could do a position we just click P and we could position it just put that to the start 
and we can go forward maybe to here two seconds so and we'll go for a second and a half and then we can rotate down to or we could just go actually we could right click go transform and then reset so that will reset to there and then we could you know, if I just do a quick RAM preview hopefully it will be quick be ready. Well, I'll just put the quality down for a bit. I'll just put it on third. And as you can see, you could create some really nice effects with this. And uh, something I'm definitely going to play around with. And that's just basically a quick overview of lights in After Effects and uh, how you can use them in different ways. As I said, I never see a lot of people actually using them. And um, I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do some tutorials on lights and like glossy materials in uh, Cinema 4D. So if you if you like that, then give this video a like because it helps me out a lot, and uh, and that will give me a good clear indicator that you want the tutorial. So that is about all for today, guys. Um, I got a new microphone, and I hope you can my voice is a bit more clear and there's a bit more clarity to it. And that is all, so thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next video.